my witch lids. It's kind of early in the morning and that's okay. I figured um, what I would do for you today is show you how to make um, witch bells, which are what these are. These are the ones that actually normally hang on my front door. And basically it's like a, um, a purification method every time you open the door because your bells are gonna jingle jangle jingle so this one has three bells and I'm probably gonna actually end up taking this one apart and adding to it and doing some other things with it just for more color um, but in order to make this you'll want a ring that will fit over your doorknob unless you're going to hang it on your door then you can get a smaller one um, or a larger one whatever you want to do and um, You'll need some bells. I just have one remaining Christmas bell here. And then you'll need some yarn. And it's best to use yarn that is a natural fiber. In this case, um, this yarn is all cotton. If you're wondering what the smoke is, that is from some Nag Champa that I decided to burn while I do this because it helps ground me and focus me and it helps me um, clearly articulate my intentions for what I'm making. So this is actually, um, I mean, you can cast a magic circle if you want, but you don't have to. This is really um, your opportunity to commune with yourself and to put your energy into what you're doing so that you can protect your home. Um, so I'm gonna start here with, um, I'm gonna use some tan and some blue because I like these colors. And what we're gonna do is I am going to use a double strand. There we go. Oh yeah, this yarn is knotted up, isn't it? Oh no, that's just going the wrong direction. All right. So my yarn is being annoying, but what else is new? There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna use a double strand and I'm gonna actually wrap the um, yarn around my ring. Um, actually, before I do that, I'm gonna cut a good length of it um, because these won't fit through the ring to do it properly. So that looks good. Maybe too much, but that's okay. Too much is better than not enough. So I'm just gonna wrap it, and you can do this any way you want. I mean, the first one I did there is clearly um, very, very plain, and that's okay. You can make it as plain or as fancy as you want. This is probably as fancy as I'm gonna get. Um, But once you get this wrapped around your ring, really yarn, um, you'll tie it off or glue it down, whatever you want, and then you can start on some other things. Um, so like with this one, I just, I made some lengths of white yarn and I just looped them around the ring and then I took several strands and I braided them together and threw the bells into the braid. Um, so this is a really simple one, like I said, and um, you can um, imbue it if you wish. And to imbue it, um, there's really not a ritual and everybody does it differently. The way I imbue things is I hold the item in my hand and I cover it with my other hand and then I close my eyes and I clearly state in my in my mind I clearly state my purpose and I push my energy into the object and then um, that's really it I mean it's simple and it works for me and then um, once I'm done in viewing it then I can hang it back on my door and um, it just kind of serves as a reminder that the house is under protection. 
Um, so rather than sit here and try to wrap this with a whole bunch of yarn, because it will take a while and it's not something that you really want to rush, um, but I know you're here for like entertaining content. Um, this doesn't happen to be entertaining. It happens to be educational though. Um, so you can also start this off by tying this to your ring and then looping it, looping it through. Oops. Too much yarn, too much yarn, said nobody ever. Move those out of the way. Um, you don't necessarily have to change out your witch's bows. Um, you can, if you wanna do it seasonally, that's fine. You can do it um, however frequently you want, from ranging from never to every sabbat to every week whatever you want to do. Um, mine, I think, um, I, I kind of leave them till I get bored with them and then I change them. So, um, there's a lot of different things you can do. So I'm going to try to wind this quickly. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and then I will come back and show you next steps. All right. So I have finished wrapping my ring. You can see I have a tail here and that's fine. Um, I'm gonna add some other colors at this point to um, kind of blend it and hide it. Um, so I've used blue and tan, so I'm gonna use some yellow and some white. Is this not gonna go? Nope, it's not, okay. Um, and these I want to cut in a fairly long length. Um, not too awfully long, but you know, fairly long. That'll work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of fold this back and forth till I feel I have enough, um, enough of a, of a strand. And I'm going to do the same thing with the white. Now I noticed that um, my first set of witches bells there, I didn't cover the um, the metal ring, and I noticed that it's getting kind of um, dinged up from being on my door handle. So um, that's part of why I wanted to cover this set so that it would, you know, stay nice. Um, I mean, even the bells on the on the first set of witches' bells are a bit dinged up from banging against the door, getting caught in the door, you know, all of that stuff. But um, it's also handy to know when people are coming into your house. So, not that people like just randomly walk into my house or anything, but like if cameraman Ken has gone out and um, not said that he was going out and then he comes in through the front door, I can usually hear that. <laughs> so, because, you know, witches bells. Um, or if there's, you know, somebody at the door when they knock, it sometimes, uh, it sometimes rings the bells as well. So it's extra, extra hearing for So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut through these ends here and oops, cut an extra piece off. And uh, that's going to be the yellow strands. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the white. And uh, it's going to be 
approximately the same length because I'm going to mix these together. And this is a good project for any time of the year. It doesn't have to be uh, necessarily associated with any sabots or anything like that. Um, although I think um, I think my original set was associated with uh, Beltane, but um, this is just something that you can do uh, for yourself or what have you. Um, you can make these for other people. If you don't want to make your own, um, you can always uh, scavenge Etsy for people who uh, make these. My only caution with that is um, since this is an object that is designed for protection, for protecting a house and such, you have to be careful of what other people imbue into them, which is why I prefer to make my own things because I know what's going into these and um, I know what uh, types of protection I use and I'm very specific. And um, whereas yes, I could just toss money at an artisan who makes beautiful witch's bells, I just don't want to have to deal with having to remove whatever energy is already present in the object and then re-imbue it with my own. Because invariably I miss something. And it's really weird when a couple energies that aren't necessarily compatible are working together. So um, that's my only thing about buying them from, um, from other people. Okay, those look to be about even. Okay, and snip, snip. There we go. All right, so these are ready to be blended. And you can blend them however you want to blend them. I just sort of open them up. I'm missing a few here. This is probably the hardest way to do this, by the way, so probably don't do it like I do. Yeah, I'm pretty much just making a mess, but that's okay. There we go. So then what I'm gonna do with these is I'm going to drape them through here, like this, and loop them around and through so that it is covering the lump there of blue and tan at the center of my ring. And then from here, you can, I mean, there's different things you can do. You can trim this so that it's all the same length here at the bottom if you want. Um, you can add in more yarns or whatever, but the one thing that you definitely wanna do is you wanna make sure that you add your bells onto your, um, which is bells somehow in whatever way you wish to do. If you wish to add um, like a feather or something like that in here and um, attach the bell to the feather to your 
yarn, that's perfectly fine. You can do it however you want. So that's pretty much, uh, I mean, that's pretty much how you make witch's spells. It's pretty easy. It's pretty simple. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish this one off camera and, um, you know, I'll come back and show it to you and um, we'll end the video. All right, my witchlets, we're back. And this is how I decided to go with my witch's spells. So these will hang on my door and they will sound whenever the door opens. And it's just a pleasant little reminder to know that my house is protected. Um, I have not imbued these yet and um, I will show you how I do it right now. You won't hear anything, you'll just see me. So I put as much of the object in my hand as I can, put my hand over the object, and then I focus. So I really hope you enjoyed this video today and if you did go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you didn't go ahead and hit the dislike button just leave me a comment either way let me know what's going on if there's something in particular you'd like to see about how to make something or what something is in a particular ritual or something like that go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know so that I know how to tailor these videos for you um, all, as always, make sure that you hit that uh, subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you know when my videos are coming out. And beyond that, blessed be.